Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Bill Allen. I'm sitting in from Winston Chester. Got a good show lined up. A lot of pictures today and uh, and a special guest coming in. Today is Thursday, July the 6th. Um, The weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning by Drew Pollard. No surprise, going to be a high of 91 today with the low of a chilly 76 and a 40% chance of rain. And they've got winds listed at uh, coming out of the west at 5 to 10. Add 10 miles an hour to that and you should be just about right. Um, and Kent Forest Lawn sponsoring the tides today. The high today is at 1.13 p.m. with the low tonight at 11.30 p.m. Uh, if you like to fish a falling tide, this is going to be a great day to do it. The uh, water temp is 84, and uh, we fished the other day in some places where the water temp was close to 88, so it is really, really warm in the water. Um, Let's look at our river readings. Apalachicola at Bluntstown is 7.4, and that's fairly steady through Sunday. And then Choctahatchee at Carryville is 4 feet, and you got a slow rise through about uh, Saturday. Um, I missed the uh, peak times for today, which is this morning at 8.42 to 9.42, only a one-hour window. Then this afternoon, taking advantage of that falling tide from 3.03 to 5.03. So if you can get out today, it ought to be a pretty decent day. Drink a lot of water. It's very hot out there. So we're going to go ahead and take this break and come back. Hey, welcome back. Um, joined by a familiar face, my used to be good fishing partner. I'll explain that later. Um, Greg Brednicki, but uh, we got a lot of pictures today. There's a lot of people out fishing. I've got some ones that I want to get to that I've been holding on for a little while. But Greg, I think uh, you know these two young ladies, correct? Yeah, uh, that is uh, Leisha Bennett and my granddaughters on the right in the blue shirt, uh, Stella. And we went down to Marathon for a week. That was her summer trip. And we caught dolphin, mahi-mahi, you know, mm. whatever you want to call them, and, and some tuna. So the girls caught every one of those fish but one, and uh, they had a large time. It was really, really good. And uh, we went out about 20 miles from Sure, there we're in the in the real tall water, probably. That's deep water, Maryland. Yeah, yeah, a thousand feet, and then uh, had a a peak that uh, hump out there that we fished around, and it was a great day. And then on the way back, they hit one of those little we hit one of those little storms, mm. and we were in a thirty-five foot contender, uh, and the girls were amazing. I mean, they should have been you know, scared to death, and it didn't bother them, but the storm that we hit, um, you know, rain was coming sideways, and it was, instead of it being, you know, one to two foot, it was, you know, four to five. And they took it like champs, right? They did. They were terrific, and it took us probably half hour to get through that. Oh, that's and, always uh, fun. It was a long time, and uh, they got home, they were a little wet, but uh, they were happy. And, and uh, we had some good food. Which one of them let you borrow this fish for the picture? Well, you know, I don't know how I ended up. There was, I I let that one down, and uh, and so when he hit it, I said, okay, I'll go ahead and, and crank it up. That was a 26 and a half pound blackfin. They're real solid. You know, I mean, it's mm-hmm. oh, the, yeah. the weight per inch is amazing. And uh, they don't get, they probably get about twice that big, maybe 50 pounds black fins do. Mm-hmm. But we had ceviche, we had tuna poke, <laughs> we had, we took a bunch of it to one of the restaurants down there and had them cook that in the mahi yeah. for the whole group of us. And I, I don't know how many meals we ate off of all that fish, but it was, uh, it was 
terrific. We had some great weather down there. Uh, and, uh, that's cool. What a good trip. Yeah. Uh, I want to pull up, if I can, this is Stacy Vineyard. She is the daughter of Lynn Paul at Austin Machine Works, who okay. uh, was an old buddy of ours from a long time back. She's fishing with her husband. Now, she does a lot of freshwater fishing. Mm -hmm. And uh, they they went out together, and, and this is um, her first saltwater fish, or her first redfish. Wow! So she is going to be spoiled from there. And I and I think they caught. Uh, I think he said they caught uh, several fish, five or six nice fish like that. We just had a had a great day. I wanted to get that in, and and uh, you know, Glenn Paul's been building trailers over there at Austin Machine Works forever. Does a great job. I use him all the time. Now this is uh, a couple of studs from uh, Ricky Green sent that. That's his son Ben, and uh, caught in an undisclosed location. But uh, <clears throat> notice that it's not a picture of Ricky holding those fish. It's uh, it's his son Ben. But those are some some pretty substantial trout. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, hey, I you're supposed I'm, to keep one over 19 inches. So. Um, I hope that that was before. I hope there were that, that oh, picture okay. was from a, from a little while back. Yeah, so, I so. Uh, yeah, I wanted to get those in, and then also, um, you know, pardon me the way that I run through these, but uh, that's a familiar face right there. Whew. Uh, it's a uh, Artie with a pretty nice catch, and and uh, he was honest about it, and the reason he caught him. Well, this guy right here, a good friend of ours. Old Carl. And, uh, yeah, Carl, uh, he, he took him out and, and put him on him. But that's Carl Andrews, that's a buddy that we scallop with and all that. So, all right, man, there's been a lot of activity uh, lately. And um, we have got to partake of some of it just recently. But, uh, you know, right here before this break, you know, that water is hot. Where we were the other day was 88 degrees, mm -hmm. and we had to move to a little deeper water t just to find any fish. You know, yeah. I think the shallows were, were too hot for them to be up there. Well, it just, you know, we threw up on shore uh, a couple of times and just happened to, to hit them. But there's a, a couple of tips I want to share with people today that uh, I don't know that everybody thinks about it, and maybe they'll think that we're kind of, oh, that doesn't make sense, but. Well, they already think that about us, so that's not gonna be a big <laughs> but, loss. But, so. but yeah, the water. Let's go ahead, the let's hot. take this break to pay the bills, and we'll come right back with this super secret information. All right, welcome back, all right, not to. Trail on there, brother. Well, you know, we noticed, uh, and of course I've been kind of tracking this for the last few years. We were talking about it the other day, early in the morning, <clears throat> and we're, people get out there, first light, you want to be throwing that top water lower. You know, just, uh, I guess we learned that from bass fishing mm. early in late. And watching and throwing and seeing which way the wind is pushing you, you have a, if the wind's blowing you a certain way and the, and the sun is rising a certain way and you look at it and you're, you can't see. True. How can a fish see that lure when it comes up to hit or is gonna have trouble? All right. As opposed to if the wind's blowing the other way and the, of the opposite of where the sun's coming up and or going down. Um, I think you need to be mindful of that when you're fishing early in the morning, mm. when you're fishing just before dark, when the sun's at a certain angle, um, especially throwing top water lures. I have found that I'll throw, 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 and say, so, well, you know what? I'm gonna throw a little bit on this angle over here because of the angle of the sun and seem to get more hits. Is it coincidental? I don't know. Oh, well, I, Am I, don't I think so. You I know, mean, it just it just seems like you have to be mindful of those things when you're when you're throwing a top order lure. Well, and it just goes <clears throat> with with two 
And of course, we love to early or late when the tides are right, throw in top water. But um, <clears throat> that's the just yeah, because you know when once the sun's up high, you know you're putting the you're putting the top water away for that very reason. So it only stands to reason that if you're in a situation where they're looking into it you know, positioning the boat is going to, going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you've got a short window really on, on top water. I mean, unless you've got a cloudy day to be, unless you've got a cloudy day or yeah. one of the best days I ever had, but it was so foggy. I had to use the GPS to find where I was going. Right. Oh my Lord. And it was <clears throat> slick and you throw a top water out there and start moving it and you could, you could see the redfish look like somebody shot a torpedo. Mm -hmm. You could see them headed for the for the bait, which was you know you had to really you can't stop it right. I mean you got to let your nerves calm down and keep moving that bait and give them a chance to get it. But we just we absolutely slayed them that morning. That fog didn't burn off till ten o'clock, and we we fished you know top water the whole time. That was a that sure, was sometimes a they're headed trip. for the sound too. And, yeah, absolutely. And and it's <clears throat> really odd uh, that well, it's not really that odd that that you'll have them where they'll come and hit it and knock it three feet up in the air or miss it, miss it, you know, because of the when they're missing it, uh, they don't see it as well, so it's either too bright or too dark or they're just so aggressive that mm -hmm. or they're hitting it right at the time that you're twitching it <clears throat> but look how many foul hooked fish that we catch with our twitch baits oh yeah where we're those are baits that go down about the 18 Paul inches browns of the world yeah they go down about 18 inches and so you jerk 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 and that bait comes up and then as it goes down a lot of times they'll hit it well once you foul hook, that twitch, 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 he's coming up to it. He's not expecting that third twitch or that second twitch. Yeah. <laughs> and you get them hooked here, and you get them hooked here, yeah, and you get well, them hooked that's true. everywhere. That's true with trout, especially with redfish, <clears throat> the way they have to turn. Yeah. You know, mouths are on the bottom, obviously. They've got to turn to, to hit it. But, uh, you know, that's uh, the biggest key to, to fishing the uh, uh, – like the Paul Browns of the world, the slow sinking, the suspending baits, is that move that thing two or three times pretty good and stop. Yeah. And allow it to sink, to come up, to do from wherever it is. Because, you know, the majority of the time, that's when they're going to nail it. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, it's just uh, any of those baits that do like that. But, I mean, that pause is really where you where they're going to where they're going to attack it at that at point. least you know I'd say four out of five times oh yeah it's no. where, where you get this and, and then a lot of the times you miss them if they go to hit it when you're twitching it because you're actually snatching it away from them now if he hits real comes at it from the side right when you're snatching that's probably some of the time that you get either cut off or you know just bad timing or of course it can be like the other day a skipjack <laughs> which <clears throat> those, you know, they'll hit a real aggressive moving bait and they don't have teeth, but they're, they're gums. I mean, they can just gnaw away at your, at your leader and uh, always, especially that's another tip. If you're out there fishing and you, uh, the pompano fishermen will know this, you're pompano fishing with a jig or even anybody fishing with whatever they uh, use and you get into skipjacks, if you want to keep your lure, after you catch one, you better take that fingers, yeah. hold the lure, and run it up the line. And you will feel some frays. And just give it a little tug. And more times than not, when you give it that little tug, the line snaps you. Yeah, the dang. You cut off that piece of leader in there and retie it because you know, everything's expensive. Well, the it is, and it's, and it's the top water are the, you know, the jerk baits and those kind of things. So if, after a good fight, uh, or really any fish, like I said, run your hand up and down that leader. It's, it will save you money. Yeah, take but, take your time. Yeah. Plus, it'll save you a fish. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> because you may catch a, a skipjack in the next next 
fish, you know, you get the next hit of something really decent and you get broke off, but yeah. maybe for the wrong reason because you didn't, you know, think about take, the fact that take the time to that your line was uh, was frayed or weak or whatever. And and even even not getting strikes, I've noticed when we're doing all that twitching that we use for the uh, Paul Brown or the other uh, lures, the other sinking hard, what I refer to as hard baits because yeah. they're not soft like the Paul Browns. Twitch, 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 and let's uh, switch, which is, you know, you may throw it 50, 60 times, even if you don't get a strike. You know what? Even with a good knot, you can eventually snap that knot. Yeah. Or if you take a cat, make a cast, and your bail closes, you lose and, a lot and of you stuff really that way. put a, a really strong, quick pull on that. You will. We. How many times does that happen? Uh, Where you go? Too Pum. often. You sit these, there and the bail closes. Wham! And all these, of a sudden, these new reels that are more sensitive, sensitive, more sophisticated, they will they will set on you in a heartbeat, and it will cost you. So let's take this quick break. We'll come right back. All right. Welcome back. I think I've overcome my. Uh, my difficulties here with the the video, which is uh, not that hard to figure out, but uh, I got if I did get to sneak out the other day by myself, I had a window of a, of a couple of hours and uh, had a good tide, and wound up sneaking on a sneaking up to a few red fish. It's hard to do a selfie with uh, you know when you're holding the fish and everything else, but that's a couple of them that I wound up. Uh, nailing decent size you know but um, I wanted to go back and look at some of the uh, results of these tri afternoon trips that we've been able to get on and uh, that was a pretty good day right there mm -hmm. uh, that's where we uh, what I think between Paul Brown and the uh, the jerk shad is what most of those were caught on and that, uh, that one in the center was pretty good size. How big was he? Yeah, well, look at the boards. This is 19, I guess. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty decent fish. So let me kind of get on down here to some of these other pictures. And this is from uh, the other morning when we were out early and uh, got up on a pretty good trout right there. Uh, that's a different one. That's just uh, some of them that we got there. The Lucky Cigar, there's a stud which is, uh, that was pretty good sized fish. That was our biggest one in the boat that day. Uh, there was a substantially larger trout that was on that didn't make it all the way in the boat. And I'm not gonna say anything about people being able to net fish. I'm just gonna let it go like that. You figure out what happened. But uh, uh, this is just a couple of days that we were able to get out. That was the trip the other day. And uh, you know, like I said, we, we catch it. There's some pretty nice fish out there um, that we've been able to find. But the last couple of times, we have been devoid of redfish. Yeah, I caught that one when I went by myself that was 29 inches yeah and it I mean it had shoulders on it it was really so did a, you manage to to hook him and net him is that correct yeah okay yeah I'm sure did and I sent you the video there. about six times but your technology is <laughs> ch technologically challenged yeah, obviously, obviously so nobody obviously. gets to see it but um, anyway uh, I don't understand how and why and we fish in the same red fishy places that one fish out of four trips, no reds. Yeah. Saw one, but that one was just, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, it was, uh, it's been crazy. We've had some great, great trout. You know, yeah, but, and, and we've had <clears> some <throat> real good tides and where we like to fish in that real skinny water with the, uh, the tides and we go back in the marsh and just I'm I'm throwing a, the uh, jerk shad you know Greg's switching between the top water and the uh, Paul Browns fish that entire area for what an hour and a half we wandered around in there mm -hmm. 
on a perfect incoming tide, and there was a distinct lack of bait. Right. And then uh, we couldn't find a redfish or really a decent trout in there. You know, we caught a couple. So, but one one factor though that you haven't brought up, crappy moon. Uh, yeah. A lot of moon. So, and if you do have a lot of moon the night before, if your tides are 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 high early. The longer you can get away from that full moon, the, the better moon. chance you have. So if you have a full moon, you're better off if you can fish and there's water where you want to fish as late as you can in the afternoon right. the next day. So when they <clears throat> feed again. <clears throat> right, which is really, you know, so, so, you know, we had to, it, you go when you can go, you go when the weather's right, sometimes the mood is goofy, but you need to watch that. But if we could have gotten out there with no moon, I know that that one day that I went by myself had a good moon, had a good tide, oh, had a pretty decent fisherman, we've and caught, I got a lot of fish. We, uh, we so. had, we, uh, we've caught a ton of them in there, but the point being is, is that was where we wanted to be. That was exactly the perfect time, and there weren't any fish in there for whatever reason. So we had to make an adjustment and go outside <laughs> and hit some of those places in a little bit deeper water. Yeah. Um, and then again, work in a combination of things and the top water was over by then, but, but you know, we got out there and as you know, we've caught some real decent trout. I mean, real decent trout, but the point is be flexible. If they're not in your favorite spot in the world at the perfect time, be, be have enough tackle, have enough rods to go somewhere else and figure out where the fish are. Sometimes they don't cooperate with you, but. Uh, or, or, anyway. you know, it, it, here's the thing too, one, one last point. The ones that we did catch the other day, after the full moon, how much did they regurgitate in the live well? Oh my goodness, the there live was well eight or was ten full of bait fish. Of stuff that they had regurgitated while they were in there. So they could be around, they're just not feeding because they ate all night. <laughs> All right, listen, we've talked our way through this again. I hope you picked up something you enjoyed. Have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Van Handle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.